So it, 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 it raises the point as we, we come to the end, um, Thomas, and I, a part of the reason why I have done this presentation is one, I can see that you have done it in a systematic data analytic form. And this is not just about what you've heard somebody say, you've, you've done it in a systematic way. And that therefore adds credibility to what has been done. Two, once it has been identified that there could be an abnormality, there is a responsibility to take a look at it. And this is where I can't justify the big medicine system in the sense that we do have to be curious and reassure the public. And you can't do reassurance if you haven't looked. I th think that's the big issue yeah. that I have at the moment. At the moment we hear there is no evidence of because no one has done the research. That's not the same as doing the research and saying there is no evidence. And so certainly in this context, if my research is suggestive that is right with regards to cryoglobulins, or very high levels of immunoglobulins causing these fibrous clots, it does mean that there will be an increased risk of other kinds of diseases when people are alive. And if that's the case, we need to know so that we can potentially mitigate any of the patterns that are occurring. I would call any scientist, any doctor who has seen this presentation, raise awareness just ask the question. We don't know why they're occurring. And I think we have a responsibility to look and to understand. What are your final comments, Thomas? Just a couple of things. Uh, first of all, there, there still is some uh, um, belief by the embalmers out there that this, that this phenomenon is happening uh, be before death as well, uh, because they, they picked up warm bodies, bodies that are only an hour or two old, and they're still finding these large white fibrous clots. So they, they have a hard time believing that they could, they could form that quickly in a body that's not, not, not even cold yet. Um, the other thing is, is it, going back to the, the credibility of the survey, is at the very end of the survey, doctor, we did allow uh, embalmers to make comments about, uh, about the white fibrous clots if they wanted to. So I want to read to you just a couple of uh, uh, comments to show you that we took all answers, whether they were you know, positive or negative, however the embalmers responded. And remember again that I did never ask or put in the instructions uh, any mentions of the word COVID or the COVID vaccine. All I asked again to the embalmers is, what are you seeing? When did you see it? Where in the body are you finding it? And in what percentage of your corpses are you seeing these, these white fibrous clots? Let me read a couple of these to you. Here's one from the state of Alabama. I've seen clotting coming from most any of the points of incision. I mainly embalm in common carotids, and I've seen many white fibrous clots about the same time the vaccine came out. I've seen an increase also uh, in COVID for the jelly clots as well. Here's a naysayer comment from the state of California. I've never seen any white clots or any increase in grape jelly clots. Not sure what you're getting at. Do you believe this is vaccine related or something? I've embalmed over 500 people from 2020 to now, and I've never seen any of this. I'll read you two more. Here's one from the state of Ohio. People that were COVID confirmed had bad grape jelly clots. It was early 2021 when we started seeing the white fibrin structures being pulled out of both the veins and the arteries. Prior to 2021, we never pulled a clot from an artery. I just pulled a white structure from the right common carotid yesterday. Here's another naysayer one from the state of Arizona. I've seen zero changes to the presentation of human remains in the last few years. It's clear that this is a poor attempt at farming anecdotes to malign the COVID vaccine. Please don't do this or claim any anonymous survey data as any sort of substitute for rigorous scientific research. Here's one more. My clients have, that have had the COVID vaccine have passed of COVID and I've had remarkably more clots, so much so that I began to ask families if their loved ones had had the vaccine. So some of the embalmers got curious themselves and started asking the 
families of the deceased. But I think it shows you that I did take every answer that came, whether, and what's, it was, like I said, interesting about that is I never mentioned COVID or the vaccines, yet the embalmers responding felt compelled to either defend or implicate the vaccines as a potential cause for these clots. So regardless of what we say, I think your, your point is right on. I'm not a doctor, you are, but what we need to do is, is, is the people that are, that are in this field, the FDA, the CDC, they need to get off their rear ends and do some investigation about this. They need to get, get curious, look into it. This phenomenon is happening. We've got 119 embalmers from around the world saying it's happening. Let's go look. Let's go look at it and see and see what's up and what's causing it. 